What's going on YouTube? Today I'm taking apart the float detent assembly for a Summit Hydraulic 11 gallon per minute P40 mono block valve. The part number or the, the valve number is P402-2K16A1-J. So a little backstory on this. I have a 96 Kubota uh, that was the factory hydraulic valve was leaking a little. Um, uh, I checked out Chief uh, slash Bailey and summit and saw that the offerings from the general monoblock two spool valves uh, were considerably cheaper um, at a difference of about thirteen hundred dollars less than kubota um, the, that's again that's fifteen hundred dollars from kubota and about two hundred bucks from the other the other guys um, summit had a uh, online sales through ebay so i decided to go through there um, their stuff looked pretty good and they did come with this float assembly so for those of you who don't know float basically neutralizes a hydraulic circuit uh, for free flow allowing in this case the loader arms to contour to the ground while uh, you know while planing off ground plowing snow etc so um, I was running the tractor the other day and for whatever reason these bolts ended up loosening up I don't know if they were loose from the factory I don't I never took the back cap off so I don't know um, and then it started leaking pretty heavily out between the the valve body which would be here and this top plate so um i reached out to summit and asked if they had a rebuild kit available figuring i was going to need seals and i was informed that basically no they don't have an off-the-shelf uh, kit available they also couldn't provide me with o-ring numbers so the only thing you could hope for is that if the they don't have a seal kit available that these are just stock o-rings so you can grab an O-ring kit from places, you can kind of match them up and measure, but it would have been nice if they just said, hey, this is a number 322 or something stock size, and you just go get some. So the other thing they didn't have was an exploded view or even pictures, or in this case, a video of how to take this apart and or put it back together. So I didn't really want to break into it without uh, without that, but... Um, in, in lieu of that, they ended up just saying, you know what, we're going to send you a whole new assembly. That way, you have it, you can take it apart and put it in the tractor and see if that fixes the problem. So, fortunately, I put that in there this past weekend, and it has, so far, worked pretty good. So, um, the other small issue I was having with this is when it would leak, it would fill in here. You know, this is just a back cap. We'll get to that in a minute. But it would basically hydro lock this, so I couldn't. I couldn't lower the bucket, so you had to crack one of these, and then a bunch of fluid would come out. Um, so, anyway, let's go through this. Starting at the top, um, this rod end is thre uh, the rod end has male threads, and it is threaded into the uh, spool itself, which looks to be hardened and ground. Uh, this is a log jam nut, so you back the jam nut off, and this comes out. Um, that's how I ended up taking this assembly out of the out of the valve. Let's see here. Um, and this is six thirty, and the top of this is oh, it's five uh, five ninety one. So it looks like you could actually just slide this out and not have to touch up here. I thought that was a little bigger, so I took it out. Um, in any case, inside here there is a O ring. Uh, so if you're getting leakage out the top, it's probably ported through here for some purpose that I have not determined yet. And if it's leaking out the top, that could be a, a culprit. In here, there's also a spring and a check ball of some kind. So uh, we'll put those back in here. Check ball first, spring, rod end. So I'll try to keep this on camera. All right, moving down the line here. We have this first piece, which is... Uh, Looks to be a spacer. There's no discernible features. That's just a score mark in there. There's no uh, there's no actual feature there. So this looks like it can go either way. Put that down. In here, there is an O-ring right there. So I'll slide this collar up and see what happens. All right, we'll take this all off as an assembly. Right off. That O-ring is the one that goes in the top here. So, uh, bottom of the valve side, this diameter is thinner. And the top side, the one that goes towards the valve itself, has the O-ring seat. 
So that can be there. The sleeve uh, has notches here and here and appears to be the same. So I would imagine this could go in both ways. Let's stick that back in here. Next, we have a small O-ring the size of the spool. So I will work that carefully over these sharp edges of the uh, ground section. Okay. That went under. That one, that, look, that appears to butt up against the bottom of this sleeve. I'm not really sure exactly what it does as there's the holes in the sleeve, but it was there. Next is the spacer. Now, I have noticed something about these spacers. I did take this valve apart already. Uh, the spacer, as I just took it off, has a larger OD here and a smaller one here. And that stays consistent down here, and you'll see later on. So, the stack-ups must include... Uh, the stack-ups must include that something... See how it fits in the bottom of this one? And then in the top of the stack... So this is where things get interesting because there's ball bearings in here and they like to fall all over the place. So I'll take the back cap off. It just has some hydraulic oil in it. I'll slowly move this up. I'll get to what's in here in a second. So inside here is a spacer. Or some other feature. I don't really know if it's a spacer. This has... This notch is on the bottom side of the valve. Uh... You can almost see in here where the, this is where the ball bearings ride inside. Uh, this is part of the float assembly. So, yeah, this notch goes in towards the bottom, and then this has a, sh a deeper shoulder, and that has, almost, that has no shoulder, so this ID is smaller than this one. So in here, thankfully they're still greased, because I took this apart a little while ago. There are three ball bearings in here. I didn't notice when I took it apart the first time, they shot all over the ground. And uh, I was outside with the magnet trying to find them because I actually took this apart on the tractor. So you're really going to want to take this apart and do this on the bench. Um, I tried doing this on the tractor, but because the valve is preloaded with this spring, it's really hard to get these in there. So let me grab a magnet. Let's see if I can pull some of these ball bearings out of here. There's one. Two and three. So that releases this like this cup section. So if you use a 13 millimeter, I believe it's 13 millimeter, you can remove the Allen screw and take the spring assembly off. That's what I had to do on the tractor to get this to fit. But if you're doing this on the bench, I find you know you pack it with some grease and then you can stick the balls back in here. And, uh, push, you can see it's hot as hell out here. I'm sweating my butt off. It is 83 in the shop right now, and it is 5.50 in the morning. So, all right, balls are back in. The grease holds them in place. So, we can throw this assembly back together. Here's that spacer, like I was saying before. Big shoulder on the bottom, tiny shoulder on top. We'll put the cup down here. Again, that lines up on that spacer. And then, we slide down here with that, uh, that notch first. Now, this should go in all the way down here. Then, big, big OD, small OD. Let's put that down here. And that should fit below the surface of this. If it's sticking up, if it's sticking up at all, I had it earlier, my, my first rendition of this video, uh, one of the balls got stuck back here and I didn't realize until I got the whole stack assembled and I didn't, couldn't figure out why it wasn't going back together. But So that's that. Then a ring here. Slide this down. So there were a couple of nicks in that first big O-ring. That might have been where my original leaking was coming from. Uh, I didn't really quite inspect the new one, so I don't know if that was just poor assembly. So, uh, O-ring. 
So again, uh, smaller OD versus the larger OD. Goes on first. Butts right up against that. Seals off that O-ring pretty good. Sleeve. The, the sleeve that looks like it can go either way. And the large O-ring. That one sits nice and good flush in this in this cap. And then this piece again looks like it can go either way. I don't see any problem with that. So that is the stack up of the float spool. So if I run into a problem again, I'm going to try changing out these O-rings. Uh, just try to find the stock sizes. And hopefully, if somebody's got this thing apart on their bench and they didn't remember how to put it back together, I hope this helps. So thanks for coming along today. Hope it helps somebody. Have a good day.